Hello and welcome to Google Analytics 101 for therapists. My name is Becky DeGrosa. I'm the founder of CounselingWise.com and the purpose of this video is to give you some basic information about Google Analytics which is tracking code that sits on your website and will help you determine what is going on with your site. Now you may have it installed already and you just don't know how to read the reports or find out the information that would be helpful for you in the Google Analytics reports. Uh, you may not have it installed. So we're going to talk about both of those things and just give you a little introduction to Google Analytics. So what is it, first of all? Well, Google Analytics is a free tool. It's available from Google. Uh, you can get to your account simply by uh, using your regular Gmail login and just going to google.com slash analytics. Uh, it, sits, it has code that sits on your website and it's extremely valuable in that it will give you a lot of information about your marketing and how your site is performing. Okay, So specifically it will show you things such as what your website traffic sources are, um, what visitors are coming and if they're actually engaging with your website or if they're just leaving and that is something that we call bouncing. Which pages on your site are the most engaging? Uh, you know, even which pages on your site have the most bounces, so they're least engaging. Uh, it'll give you a really good sense if your marketing is improving over time and that's one of the best things about this system. And it'll also tell you which of your referral sources uh, deliver high quality visitors and then of course which ones are a waste. One of the things that I have seen is that there's certain directory listings in the therapy world that deliver really good results and people will come to your site and they'll stay a long time from those directory listings and then there's others that may deliver traffic so at first you may think oh this is great I'm getting you know traffic from this uh, directory listing that I'm paying for but if you actually look at it it's uh, traffic that comes and goes very quickly so it's very low quality traffic and finally you have the ability with uh, Google Analytics to be alerted if something horrible happens to your website so you have the ability to set an alert if your traffic drops tremendously or something like that and that is uh, often one of the ways that you can find out that something happened that you got hacked or that your uh, your website is no longer being hosted it, it expired your hosting account expired your domain expired something like that okay and so it's a really useful tool from that perspective now <clears throat> this is very basic training this is uh, you know Google Analytics 101 my uh, plan is to do a 102 and a 103 video as well where I'm going to get a, into a little more detail um, but this tool is extremely powerful uh, I'm only going to cover the basics here there's so much to it that I don't even understand but I get a lot of value out of it from looking at uh, our clients sites to see what's going on for them we look at it as the part of every marketing analysis that we do and what I'm gonna do is is basically walk through this and uh, using a therapist account April Lyons account actually uh, who was kind enough to volunteer the use of her account and just show you how I look at it the basic things that I look at it when I go into an account okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over here, bring April's account in, and I'm going to walk through it just as if I were looking at a, an account without anyone watching, okay? So first of all, when I come into anyone's account, I'm going to look at the number of sessions that they have and the number of users. Now what this means is these are unique users and if the session number is higher than the user number that simply means that some of those users have come to the site multiple times. Okay, Page views is typically how many times or how many pages did they look at on the site so you can see that um, these folks on average looked at you know somewhere about two pages something like that down here of course pages per session this is the average number of pages per session so nearly two all right and then uh, we can also see that folks stayed on her site for an average of one minute and 49 seconds the bounce rate is 76 percent and uh, 73 nearly 74 percent of her folks were new sessions okay meaning those folks had never been to her site before now 
Before I get into what numbers are good and what numbers aren't good, I also want to let you know that uh, there is something that is going on. Although Google Analytics is the best free tool out there, I mean, all data stems from Google, so it's the best, it's the best tool out there, free or paid, in terms of the amount of data you get. But there is something that has been happening recently with what we call ghost spam and referral spam in Google Analytics. Now, um, there is a way to block that. And in April's account, and perhaps in your account, if you look, you're going to notice that you have this going on as well. So some of these numbers um, might look as if they aren't very strong. And we have recently installed some things to block the uh, the spam numbers in here. So when I get into making um, Google Analytics 102 and 103, I think what you're going to see is that these numbers are better because we block some of that stuff. Okay, so let me just start by saying that, that these numbers may look a little low in some cases, uh, but they're going to improve over time because we do that. We've, we've done that. Now, one of the ways that we can tell that there's referral spam is that you can see that for the English language right here, April had 458 visitors and or sessions, I mean. And then there's this not set, which is also extremely high, 291. This is most likely referral spam, ghost spam. And uh, so we're going to just not worry about that right now. Over time, this is going to go very, very low because we've cleaned it up. Uh, but it has to, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, a month period here. Up at the top, you can always tell what you're looking at. Google Analytics defaults to a month. So the last rolling month is what it's going to show. Today's January 28th, so it's going to show me, you know, the previous month. And uh, <clears throat> today's date, of course, you know, we haven't finished collecting data, so it's not going to show me today's month, today's data, okay? So anyway... That's how it works. It's going to default to the last month. You can set the time frame, whatever you want, and I'll show you how I do that here in a second. All right. So anyway, what I do is I just look at these general numbers. I get a sense. Oh, OK. Some of this is, is spam. OK, we should clean that up. And I'm just going to, you know, know that when I'm looking at the data. Then what I do is I typically go over here and you can see there's there's different areas here. I can look at all sorts of different things, but what I'm going to start with first is I'm going to go down to acquisition. Now acquisition is basically, hey, where is this data coming from, right? Uh, where is it? Where are these numbers being acquired from? Uh, I can look at the overview data here, okay, and I can pretty much see the, the same types of things, but I can see that with organic search, which is Organic search, of course, is the uh, natural Google results. I can see that there's 328 visitors. With referrals, I can see there's 303. Okay, and so that is also a sign that we have some spam um, in there because most therapists will have maybe, you know, 10 to 20 referrals, uh, meaning traffic from Psychology Today, goodtherapy.org, perhaps you wrote a guest blog somewhere and uh, you're getting traffic from that. Uh, so this number is artificially high, and I just know that. Uh, direct traffic, meaning people actually typing in some form of uh, April's URL. Sometimes direct traffic can also um, come from email. So if she's emailing her list and she has links out there with uh, you know, a link back to a blog post or something, that can count in direct traffic. Then she's also running Google AdWords, and so she has some paid search. And then social is traffic from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Okay, Pinterest, where, wherever she's active socially. So I'm going to go into these a little bit so that you can see what's inside there. Now, organic search, again, this is the data that is coming from, you know, visitors coming from Google uh, organic, the regular Google searches. One thing you'll find is that Google blocks out a lot of the keywords, okay? So right here, you're always going to have something at the top that says not provided, meaning you get a lot of visits uh, that are maybe for certain terms that Google feels would be identifying they're so specific or something like that that they would be uh, violating the privacy of the searcher and so Google does not provide that uh, and we can see with the not provided that she had 277 visits 
that uh, the bounce rate is 63.9. So that's, you know, that's pretty decent. It's much lower than the uh, bounce, the overall bounce rate of 70%. Ideally, we'd love to see bounce rates um, no more than 60%. Okay, so she's, she's getting there with that. You can see that people stayed for 2.2 pages, two minutes, uh, nearly two and a half minutes on our site, which is not bad at all. And so this, you know, this whole um, view of the organic traffic is pretty decent, okay? Um, on average, <clears throat> people stayed for, you know, getting close to three minutes. So that's not bad. Uh, getting close to two and a half pages. All right. So this is the summary number numbers up here. These are the summary numbers. And then down here, we can actually see certain um, terms that people actually typed in and got to the website. Okay. Now, you always want to look at the bottom here and we can see that she has 18 different rows and so uh, 17 different terms if you take out this one that are driving traffic to her site so what I always do is just make sure that this number is going to show me everything all right and then I can scroll down and see the whole thing so obviously she's getting a fair amount of traffic for PTSD treatment Boulder Okay, and in fact, it's really good traffic because you can see, you know, 25 people came, um, s only a 60% bounce rate. They stayed for, you know, 2.28 pages, but they stayed for over five minutes on our site. So that is pretty decent there. That is an interested uh, set of folks who are actually staying. Now, it's the average of five minutes, so that means that, of course, some people stayed you know, 30 seconds and some people stayed 15 minutes. Um, that's just the way it goes. And uh, the average is there. So we could also um, click into this number here and see more data about the actual, <clears throat> you know, see it by itself, see this by itself. Okay. And you can do, you can do other things like uh, secondary dimension, so you could actually go in here and you could say, um, I actually want to see, let's see, um, what the landing page was, where they actually came in and landed. Now, most likely it's going to be her PTSD. Um, well, some of it is her, her homepage they came because her homepage is ranking. But some people came in on her child counseling page on her April page, on her eating disorder treatment page. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of information back in here that you can see. All right. All sorts of information and you can choose other dimensions as well. Um, you can do it by the date that they came. So we can see, oh, 1230, one, 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 three, you know, you can, you can look at all sorts of information about any term. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to channels. We can uh, take a look again at the organic search term, see what else she's getting traffic for. Again, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to expand this so I can see everything. And so a fair number of searches, of course, for, uh, you know, PTSD here, PTSD here, 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 um, you know, friend with PTSD, all sorts of things. Okay. A lot of different terms. You can also see that she has um, some traffic for things such as body shaming. Okay. She also treats uh, eating disorders. And so she's got some traffic for that. Now, again, here, one of the things that you can do with Google Analytics is we could actually go into the body shaming effects and we can see, well, what page are people coming in on? for this. Okay. So we could go look at the landing page again. Oops, sorry. We can go look at the landing page again, which is under behavior and it might go to a blog post, right? The harmful effects of body shaming. So what she could do is she could say, Oh wow, I already got some traffic for that. Let me go look at that uh, page and let me see if I can really beef that up and get more traffic because people are actually typing this in as a search term. Okay. So those are the types of things that you can do with Google Analytics. Okay, now I'm going to go back to channels and we're going to move off the organic traffic and uh, we're going to look at the referral traffic. I'm sure that it's a lot of spam, but there's probably also some good things in there. You can see that these are all spam sites. However, um, we have 11 
listings, so we're going to increase those. Most of these are spam, but she is getting, getting some traffic from goodtherapy.org. Okay. Now, it's always a good thing to say, okay, I got three visits in the last month from them. Uh, was that good quality traffic or not? And here we could see they stayed for 44 seconds on average. Um, yeah, that's okay, right? It was, it was two users. They came three times, so one person came twice. And that's, that's okay, but probably not the best. If she had another um, directory source in there that people stayed high, you know, for a longer period of time, like Psychology Today or Theravive or any of them, then we might decide, oh, okay, and you'll see this a lot of time in your own account that you have various directories and some of them people are coming and staying for five minutes, okay, and then others they're not staying very long. That can help you determine whether you should uh, keep paying all the directories or you should get rid of some of them, okay? So that's what that's about. Go back to channels. And now I'm going to go in there. Now, what you'll also see is the referrals. We're going to clean out some of that. And so when I start making the later videos, uh, you're going to see some of that disappear. It'll be cleaned up. Direct. Let's look at the direct traffic. Okay, so this is people who are actually typing in or clicking on links that are going directly to certain pages. Okay, so we can look at that. So there's a lot of direct traffic to our home page. And typically what you'll find is that direct traffic, since they know where they're going, they're obviously um, not surprised by what they see. They're intending to go to that site. The, uh, the average time duration is going to be higher, okay, for, for the most part. And so you can see that it's, it's, you know, nearly three and a half minutes here, okay? And the bounce rate is going to be lower in general than the overall site bounce rate. So a lot of folks, you know, five minutes coming to the home page. That's great. Uh, this is probably people clicking on a link that she sent out like a new, a new uh, blog post. Okay. So people are clicking on that and going to that. Um, yeah, that's what, that's what those are. And so she can look and see which ones are popular, which ones maybe aren't so popular. Uh, you know, and, and get some idea of what to do with her content there. All right, so that's the direct traffic. And again, we can look at all of it by increasing the page, seeing everything there. Okay. And then if I go back to channels, I can go to her paid track, paid search. I'm not going to do that. I just don't want to, um, she paid for that campaign and I don't want uh, to divulge what she's paying for. <laughs> that's her her business there. She's kind enough to let us see everything else here. But social, if I look at the social area, then what I'm going to see is that she has 24 visits from Facebook. She has four from Google+. We can see a big difference here. Um, you know, one minute and 14 seconds from Facebook. People are staying longer from Facebook than they are from Google+. This may um, vary for different therapists depending on what topics they're putting out on Google+. Uh, you know, sometimes I see Google Plus traffic staying a really long time. It just totally depends on the traffic. But one thing you'll notice uh, that I have noticed across many, many accounts is that often uh, Facebook traffic doesn't stay that long. Uh, sometimes it does, but typically it doesn't. Uh, people are out on Facebook looking at their friends' posts and seeing what's going on with everybody and all that. And maybe there's an article that uh, catches their eye, but what they'll do is they'll click on it, they'll pop over to your website, they'll start reading that, they'll read it really quickly, and then they'll pop back to Facebook, okay? Now in her cases, in, in her case, she has people who stayed for over two minutes, which is pretty darn good coming from Facebook, okay? But, uh, you know, that's, the, the time on site is often not very long. Okay, so these are just the um, types of traffic that we look at. And, and how I look at them when they come. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is over time, what you're going to hope is that your, uh, your traffic and your numbers in general, meaning you know bounce rate, pages per session, average visit duration, that those are improving over time. Okay, that is something that you you really want to have happen, that those things are improving over time. So what you can do, is you can go up here and you can change the date. 
and you can look at a year at a time. Okay, so instead of starting, you know, a month ago, what we can do is we can change this to go back to a year ago. And since we're going to go to January 27th, uh, which is today, we're going to say, let's start at January 28th, 2015. Let's go through January 27th, 2016. That's a whole year. And let's just look at that and see what happens. Okay. Now, if we go into our channels, it's going to reflect that date. You can see that she didn't even install Google Analytics until this date. Okay, until May. So what we could do is we could say, let's change that to whatever, May 28th instead. Okay, and you can just go in here and edit that. And then we'll see the whole period. Okay, so <clears throat> if we go into the channels themselves and <laughs> look at referral, it's way high, right? So that's that's why we know that we have spam in there. But let's look at the organic search. You're going to see it having grown over time, right? So you can see that, you know, she was only getting six and 12 sessions a day back here in the beginning when she started tracking. And then now she's, you know, 18, 15, 16, 26, Things have improved a lot in terms of that, okay? You can also um, say I want to change the the actual view to go by month, and you're, you're just going to be able to see a uh, uh, easier-to-read line, I guess is what I would say on that, to see a trend, okay? Now, we can also see for any certain term what happened here. So she wasn't getting any traffic at all for PTSD Boulder, and then she that started improving over time okay as her rankings increased okay that's how that goes uh, the other thing that we can do of course is we can continue to look at other the other channels and see what's going on and so if we look at the direct traffic we can see pretty much the same thing now here my guess is she probably did a lot more promotion in the beginning to get direct traffic and then She's relying more on organic and paid traffic here. So she's not doing as much promotion. So that could be something for her to go, oh, well, I should start sending out more emails and I should start, you know, promoting more. Okay, because she could see that back in the beginning it worked and then she stopped doing it most likely. Okay, now the other thing that we can look at, of course, is, I, again, I'm not going to look at her uh, paid, but I will look at social. So we can look at that and we can see, oh, back when she was promoting, she got a lot more probably. And she can probably um, pinpoint these things. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you, and this is probably a good chart to, to share it with you uh, on, is that you can set events. So let's say that you write a blog post that had, you know, let's say she wrote a blog post on PTSD symptoms in women. She could actually go here to this little drop down here and set an event okay and so she could say create a new annotation um, blog post on PTSD symptoms in women shared on social media okay so that's a new blog post it's something that she just did and and whatever date she did it let's say that she did it in uh, September, you know, September 10th. And then she can save that. Now, then that is going to show as an event right here on her timeline. So anytime that you're doing anything that you think might affect your traffic, either writing a, a new post type that you've never written before, doing a lot more social sharing, um, sending it to a bigger list of people, anything like that, you're going to want to put an event on your timeline and then you're going to be able to go back and see if your traffic spiked at some point oh that was due to that okay so you can have different events and you can see how they affected your traffic maybe you added a new page maybe you beefed up the SEO on another page any of those things you can really see what happened maybe you added a new AdWords campaign but anytime that you might see a fluctuation in your traffic uh, think ahead and go ahead and put an event on your timeline and that way you'll be able to uh, 
go and check and see what that what what uh, the effect was of that marketing effort. All right. I'm of course gonna uh, get rid of this because that was a made up example. All right. Whoops. I guess I didn't get rid of it. No, I did. It's gone. Okay. So uh, this is just an overview again of how you can use Google Analytics in your uh, in your marketing to see what's going on. Now I'm going to go back over here and. <clears throat> I'm going to go to uh, another little resource page here. If you do not yet have Google Analytics installed, you can um, you're, you can go to this link, but it's kind of a hard link to type in. So what I would uh, suggest is that you just Google how to install Google Analytics. And of course, at support.google.com, there are going to be step-by-step -step instructions showing you how to install Google Analytics on your website. Um, if you don't want to dive into that technical detail, I know a lot of you would prefer not to spend your time doing that, then we could install it for you. And uh, all you would need to do is go to counselingwise.com and under our, uh, you could either go to technical work for therapist, each word separated by a hyphen, or under what we do in our navigation bar, you will see a item called technical work. And you can order that and, you know, just pay for an hour of technical work and then say, uh, in the form, what I want done is I want you to install Google Analytics for me and we'll do that. Okay, so there you have it. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and uh, in, the, in the comments below for this blog and I'll get back to you and uh, good luck with your marketing. Stay tuned for the next two videos. I'll be doing those over the next couple of weeks. All right, Becky over and out. Bye-bye.